All right, I'm going to call the meeting back to order to reconvene in open session. Uh, welcome everyone to the regular board meeting of the Amory Board of Education tonight. Um, we will start out this um, meeting with the consent agenda items. I have the uh, consent agenda items and I would make a motion we approve those as presented. Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, the consent agenda items are approved. Um, next, uh, community comments. Are there any community comments? All right. Um, we're going to go a little out of order here. We're going to jump to the bottom under action items um, D, uh, resolution to petition to the DPI to waive instructional minutes requirement. Okay. Well, a little backstory that I think all of you are pretty familiar with by now. Um, the coronavirus has wreaked havoc on the school schedule, so to speak. We have been mandated by the governor of the state of Wisconsin to close schools. Effective Wednesday, the 18th of March at 5 p.m. Again, that's for all Wisconsin schools. So we were set to do that as of Friday per the mandate. And then um, the CDC, which is the Center for Disease Control, Wisconsin Department of Health, and Polk County Department of Health have all given not a directive, but a recommendation to all public, public and private schools in the state of Wisconsin. If you can close earlier, you have the choice, and we would encourage you to do so. So we moved up our closure to the end of the day tomorrow at 5 p.m. So what gets closed with that up through at least April 5th is the directive at this point. Clubhouse child care is closed. Uh, students and parents aren't to be on school campus. They're encouraged to stay home. No athletics, no practices or games. In activities after April 5th, uh, a lot of questions about what's on and what's off. We just don't know at this point in time. It's too early to tell, but stay tuned. I can promise you this. We'll message whatever the latest is to you to the best of our ability when we know that info. The trouble with this situation has been it is such a fast-moving target. The information that we have is six hours later, very old and outdated. So we're getting it out as fast as we can. Uh, staff met this morning, the district team, and we have devised a plan where we can deliver instruction K-12. It'll look different based on developmental age of kid. Uh, we've got a lot of virtual happening with middle school and high school, some with the intermediate school and the AIM program. But developmentally, again, it's tough to do with some of the kids that are younger. So they're creating what's referred to as choice boards, and we'll get more information to you about that in the days to come. We're going to have the ability for you to get it from us. We'll have a delivery. We're going to give you when that is and so forth, all the dates and times. So you'll have the opportunity to have some stuff at home. We're going to need help from parents to make, make that a priority at home. It's not what we have here. We understand that, and I'm sure you do too but it's the best we have at this point in time. Um, all staff that are doing virtual will make themselves available to kids for portions of that day uh, online, sort of office hours, so to speak, if you're speaking college kid language, office hours online, um, and they'll communicate that way. There aren't any employees that are going to lose any wage. All employee groups know that. We messaged that out today. There is no lost wage. There's no lost benefit. That is through April 5th, and then when we get out to April 5th, if we're still not here, we'll revisit that and we'll figure it out from there. But right now we're just functioning through April 5th. Uh, instructional minutes. The reason we have that on the agenda tonight, we have to have a resolution to request from the state to waive our instructional minutes requirement. Each building has a requirement. For instance, at the middle and high school level, you need 1,137 hours of instruction. And when we lose 10 days of school, you're less likely to get there. When we lose 8 or 10 or 15 weeks of school, then you're really not going to get there. So they're requesting you to take the first step, which is to make that request. In order to make that request, we have to have a resolution. I think that all bets are going to be off K-12 across the state. They're just going to waive that for us, but I have no idea. So that's the resolution we have here before you. I'm not sure if you all wanted to say something or just cast your vote or however you want to do that. Well, I agree. I think that um, Governor Evers is probably just going to waive it independently without the school district having to do this. But I, I, it's 
And it's Three technically not the governor, it's the state oh. superintendent. And the state superintendent and the Department of Health is what call in conjunction called school canceled, but the waiver would go to the state superintendent. But Tony mm -hmm. Evers, yes, I get it. Right. So just to cover our bases, I make a motion that we approve the request for uh, or the wa or the resolution for the waiver of the instructional days. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. The last thing I would like to say, if you don't mind, is I'd like to thank everybody for their flexibility and patience. This has been really hard, not just on school staff. This has been really hard on parents, too. It's scary. You've got child care issues. You have jobs of your own. There's a lot of considerations here, and this is something we've never done before. We didn't go to the coronavirus file and start printing stuff. This has never happened. So we're in uncharted waters, and parents have been fantastic. Our kids have been fantastic, and our staff has been fantastic. So thank you to everybody for making this happen. <clears throat> it's been hard, but we're going to make something really great out of something that's less than fortunate. So thank you. Okay, um, now I guess we'll back up to the administrative uh, reports. We'll start with administrative reports. All right, Mr. Gould, you're up. Okay, these are going to be pretty <laughs> short. Um, <laughs> For events uh, at the high school, we did uh, successfully uh, do the ACT on March 3rd with our juniors. Um, students did a fabulous job on that. The same day, we sent our 10th graders to a Youth Frontiers retreat, um, uh, team building um, out at WAPO, very successful. We sent our 9th graders to WITC on structured field trips that day, um, learned a lot about WITC, and we got a lot of great feedback from that. And then uh, just last week, we did um, what used to be called Teen Screen. Now it's called the Warrior Check. It's a mental health <laughs> screener that we do with um, our ninth and 10th graders. And I think I'll just withhold talking about future events for right now. Good move. <laughs> we had a lot of field trips scheduled for this week. We had our college visit trip and our courthouse trip at 7th and 8th grade. Those were both canceled. We did have a successful run with sixth grade quiz bowl, part of our GT programs, and they completed that just recently and crowned their annual champion team. And um, we had also had a really nice run with uh, Destination Imagination and some successful teams. Did get notice uh, just today that um, the state Destination Imagination competition has been canceled. Um, right now in our building and probably ours and a lot of them were we have been prepping our students on the online tools training and getting them ready for what the forward test is going to look like. It's a portion of a, um, where they can go on and like practice the tools so they understand how to manipulate the software. And we were doing that and we're going to, we kind of stop now and we're backing that up to see when we come back so that we have that fresh in their minds. And, um, and again, we're still up in the air on exactly what's going to happen even with state testing right now. So just like Josh, there's other things that we'll wait and see. We had parent-teacher conferences, and unfortunately, I have to report that we're, our um, percentage level was down quite a bit. We had an average of 82 percent, um, never have dipped out of the 90s before, so I'm not really sure what it's all about, um, what that is all about, but um, we had a very successful um, book fair along with our parent teacher conferences so that was a very nice thing and Annie Brayton um, organized and ran that for us thank you <clears throat> so opposite of that or not quite opposite the elementary school had really good attendance we had 97 percent attendance which is very high and very exciting um, I'd like to thank the parents for taking the time to come and talk to the teachers and listen to um, how their children are doing and um, get an updated report. So um, as everybody has mentioned, many events have been canceled, but one that wasn't canceled last week I'm going to talk about because it was very exciting. Author Kevin Lovegreen came to our school. He is an outdoor enthusiast and living in the Northwoods like we all do. It was very exciting, especially for our boys, because um, Kevin um, writes about Lucky Luke and his amazing hunting and fishing stories. Not to say girls don't hunt and fish. Um, 
However, the boys were very, very excited. And he spent time talking to our children about um, reading and writing and how they can all be authors. So it was exciting to see him get the um, get our children all fired up about writing. Thank you. Um, yeah, I guess a few things that I, I won't hit on here mm -hmm. because they've been kind of postponed, but um, we did attend, um, I say we, Andrew D, the business manager and I, uh, attended the federal funding conference um, a couple weeks ago down in Wisconsin Dells. It has, it's a good conference for uh, developing your special education lens as far as budgeting and um, things that aren't maybe that exciting but that are very important, like, like time and effort reporting, um, written procedures in terms of business practices. And so a lot of those things uh, um, were valuable and it's good just to connect with Andrew there. Um, on some of the things is just we're working in partnership with the business office. Um, another thing that happened as far as new staff, we did complete a training related to um, IDEA, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, and, and just kind of um, best practices for general ed and special ed teachers in um, working with students with disabilities. And so um, we focused on some of the things, practical things that they could do in the classroom, and then also um, some more compliance um, uh, angled things so that they could um, you know, keep, us out of, keep us out of hot water with some of those sticky situations and liability that can emerge. Um, a few um, trainings upcoming, but we'll have to wait and see on what happens with those. All right, thank you. Um, the next... Uh, Item on the uh, reports are the oh, is the achievement gap reduction report. So this is a report that is given twice a year to the school board, and um, it's required by the DPI. Ach achievement gap reduction is. Um, we receive extra funding from the state so that we can maintain lower class sizes and also provide some. Um, help for teachers in, um, from our reading specialist as far as instructing kids in reading. So it's just a quick report and a lot of writing, but I'm gonna point your eyes to the, the, the red. So we have to report on reading and math, and our goal is that 80% of our kindergarten students will score at or above the 25th percentile on our benchmark in reading and in math. So at the winter benchmark, 70% of our students met that goal in reading and 88% met that goal in math in kindergarten. Then you can flip. First grade, same thing, reading and math. We have 79% of our students meeting the goal in reading and 82% of our students meeting that goal in math. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in second grade, we have 74% of our students meeting the goal in reading and 83% of our students meeting the goal in math. So you can see kind of a theme here. Math has already met our year end goal of 80% or higher. And our reading scores are, are doing what they should be doing. They're, they're climbing. And then this is the third grade report, which takes um, in consideration the intermediate school and the elementary school Montessori program. And same thing, 80% of third graders will score at or above the percentile, 25th percentile, on the STAR reading assessment, which is a benchmark assessment. And at the point, this point in time, we have 76% of our third graders at or above the 25th percentile. Any questions? There's math, too. Oh, I'm sorry. And math? Again, same thing. theme holds true. 87% of our children are above the 25th percentile. So you will see me again in the spring to give you the end of the year. Okay? Thank you. Next report is the uh, Clubhouse Child Care and After School Program Report by uh, Ms. Hutton. All right, 
so it's been another great year with Clubhouse. Um, so our current enrollments, we're full as always, which is really wonderful. Um, we have a very long wait list. We're averaging nine to 12 months with kids on the wait list. <clears throat> um, I know I have one family driving to Glenwood City right now until we can get their child in. I had another one driving to Stillwater for childcare. So I, that one I've managed to have a spot for. Um, I had five calls just last week. Did you, did oh, no, I was sorry. Um, yeah, so that's our, that's fine, go back, yep. So five calls last week just for child care, and I know Cheryl brought me um, someone with paperwork already filled out needing spots. So um, it's ramping up again, and I feel really bad for some of these families that I just, when I have to tell them, you know, I, yeah, I'll have a couple openings in June, um, a few more in September, but there's already 12 kids ahead of you. So um, do the best we can. And part of it is um, an age problem. Um, with the younger kids, I can take less due to licensing requirements. And that's where we're at right now. I don't have a lot of three and four year olds. So I'm actually only to able to have eight to 10 kids instead of 12 for those ages. Um, we have a hundred, yep, go ahead. Uh, the strengths are always a um, really strong partnership with um, early childhood, uh, birth to three, special education. We're still providing some um, services to kids who need to come in um, and just have that um, time with typically developing peers to hear those speech patterns uh, and to get their services right there at the school. We do have a, a strong core group of teachers. There's been some turnover again, but we've got a great core. Um, summer camp, I had parents calling me um, last November wanting to know when they could sign up for summer camp this year. So challenges are always our limited space. Um, conflicts with other school activities. You know, if we have 80 kids after school and it's raining, but there's martial arts or there's uh, gymnastics, then we can't use the gym. So we have to try and find somewhere to put 80 kids when we have a classroom that holds 30. So we, we get creative, you know, we'll spread out in the hallways and you'll know, trip over us sometimes if you come over there at about five o'clock. Um, you know, an average day by the numbers is 50 school-aged children in the morning, um, 75 on average in the afternoons, and then mixed in with that is our 46 right now in the child care on an average day, up to you know, 52 on some days. And a high day can average 85 kids after school. And I don't know what we would do after school if we didn't have our high school students. I mean, I'm not an actual CTE academy, but we do employ um, right now 11 high school students who work almost every day with our kids. They are getting valuable experience in the field. Um, I have some college girls who are still coming back, actually six Amory grads who are now in college work for me. So they're, and some of them are gonna go on to do great things in the field of education. And that's been really nice to be a part of that. Um, young, we just had our Young Star Review. We are still a three-star program, and due to our lack of space, we are unable to get to a four or a five-star program. And that is our quality rating and improvement system that we are mandated by the state to do. We have to be part of this program in order to accept the Wisconsin Shares um, Child Care Subsidy for our low-income families. Um, but that is the only thing holding us back right now and just some this is an average day at clubhouse this is our before and after school classroom and these are your future warriors working hard they're learning and growing get some art going under the tables and some more of them we do participate in all the fun stuff of the elementary which we love Dr. Susan dressing up. Um, we're in our 13th year of our school age program, and this will be the 12th year for our summer camp program, which we're very excited for. Um, we'll be full by May 1st, if not sooner, um, depending on what's going on. We're always full by September 1st. Um, Non-school days, we do field trips, kids in the kitchen. Um, I think a lot of parents love it when their kids make supper for them, and we usually do a dessert, and a lot of fun things there. We always go to Casey's Berries. Hopefully we get to do that this year. 
Um, we've tried to do some new things and um, just make it a little more fun. Uh, we brought in a theater company. They put on, and it was raining, they were going to do it outside, and they're called Day Trippers, and they did a theater performance in the library for the kids this summer. And then we tried to do more in our community and connect the kids. Um, we went to Golden Age Manor once a week and did, brought in arts and crafts or you know, their chalk painting with them. And then Farm Table did yoga with the kids. We also did Kikido um, once a week. And then Mrs. Osaro is doing a craft corner and I did a um, you know, read your favorite book kind of pro thing with the kids. So. And this was our big hit last year. We did some fundraising and we got a wet dry water slide. Um, it's a lot cheaper. We need to go a lot more times than you know, to a day at Wild Mountain is one day of fun. This we're able to do every day. So it was a huge hit. <clears throat> yeah. Any questions? Um, you know, when they call looking, you said you had mm -hmm. five calls last week looking for child care. Mm -hmm. Do they um, always go on a waiting list or do they choose not to sign up for a waiting list? Some of them choose not to sign up. I mean, those are just the, and that, like I said, that was just last week. So even though I have 12 kids on the wait list, a lot of parents don't even bother to fill out the, the paperwork. Because they look for child care elsewhere? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, when you were talking about your high school helpers mm -hmm. at night, I'm assuming they only come after school, is that And right? non-school days, and then during the summer, too. Okay. And those are, they're, we don't, do we pay them? Mm -hmm. and, and so they are actual employees they of are, the clubhouse? Yes. And um, do we find it easier to employ the high school kids than it is to look for people outside of that, as far as finding employees to fill yes. those hours. Yeah, I, I, you know, with the colleges um, being closed right now, a couple of my girls came back and, I mean, immediately they're like, can I come into work? So they have been absolutely amazing staff. And I've had girls, and mostly girls, I have a couple of the boys that work for me as well, and they're great too. Um, but I've had one that's been with me since she was a freshman and she's a senior. So it's, they get to know the kids, they, you know, they know our routines. They're so responsible. It, they're absolutely wonderful to have. So I'm going to be really sad when a couple of the girls graduate from college and don't come back anymore. And then, so. can you tell me how many um, kids you can take in each age category sure. per up to age? Teacher? So with infants, it's a one to four ratio, and you can only have a maximum of eight for a classroom. Um, one-year-olds uh, is again one to four. At age two, we can have ten. At age three, you can have ten, and age four is twelve. And with the two-year-olds, it's one to six, so in a max group size of twelve. But our classroom is only big enough for ten. So that's due to the square footage. Okay, so it's but, 35 square feet per child. Okay. But teacher to student ratio would be one to, one to six, six. Or, mm -hmm. or provider to child yes. ratio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is why in the summer we usually use an extra classroom, um, and that's how I'm able to get a few more kids in because then we have a big enough classroom and I add another teacher and we go up to 24 year olds. And, and I'm assuming that your biggest, um, what is your biggest age category that you... Right now, serve? my biggest, where the big wait list is, is one and two year olds. Okay. We're going, yeah, there's quite a number out there. Are there any other questions or should we move on? Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. All right, next uh, <clears throat> on to the informational items. Uh, the first item is the 1920 budget projection. Okay, I'm going to be batting lead off here, and then Andy's going to take over for me in a little bit. Uh, budget projections, remember this is a preliminary budget. We are in March, and we don't approve this until the fall, so a lot changes between now and then, because in, in reality, we don't have some of the actual concrete numbers that we need until later. So 
a little background before we get to the actual budgetary stuff. The enrollment of the school district, this goes all the way back to 2010-11, so I'll call it 10 years. Uh, we sort of bottomed out, if you will, in 14-15 at just over 1,500. We've been steady uh, since with a slight increase last year, and then we're back down this year, 37. The cause for that is we graduated 128, we brought in 110. We have, I think, five. Uh, the difference in open enrollments out versus in is five more. So there's gets you up to about 20, low 20s, and then the rest is a variety of circumstances. So we are down, which does affect the budget. Open enrollment, you'll still see the trend. We have only in one year in our existence brought more kids in, and that was last year than we brought in this year. But we've also never had more go out than we ever have. Um, the place they're going, we've talked about this before, is New Richmond, mostly. New Richmond's enrollment is increasing drastically, and there are quite a few Amory kids that are part of that. So that's a trend. We have to have to do what we can to change, but it is very connected to child care, and it's very connected to place of employment. And we've talked about that. If you're going the other direction, it makes sense to drop that direction. So that's the open enrollment trend. Students with disability, we are uh, slightly up as opposed to recent years. Please know with students with disability, not only are we up slightly in percentage, we're up greatly in severity of need. We have kids that have some very involved situations, which requires more staff, more resource, which equals more money. And that's not a, a trend exclusive to Amory. That's a trend that we're seeing all over the nation. And we're doing the best we can to keep up, but it's, it's hard at times. Economically disadvantaged kids, we are up near that 40% mark. Uh, we are the highest free and reduced population in our conference. In the CISA, we're probably in the top third. Uh, where you have economically disadvantaged students, you are potentially going to have other issues that relate to budget that go with it. But that also is a factor. Um, there are some markers that we hit when we get up to the 40 to 50% range that could work in our favor financially. but uh, we don't know those factors quite yet. This is simply the number we're at most recently. The preliminary budget. I'm going to turn it over to Andy at this time. All right. Uh, as you can see here, we uh, our revenue limit this year is actually drops a little bit. Um, we also had some projects last year that we aren't having this year, so that's why we were able to counteract that. So actually, this is the first year in a few years where our actual budget will go down. Um, of course, this is, as I said, all preliminary. Things can change drastically by that time, especially what's going on right now. Um, this is the first year that I can remember ever being in the schools that we will not have a debt levy this year. We actually have defeased enough so that we will not have to levy any money towards our debt. As you know, all our debt's dropping off, and we've been fiscally responsible to set aside money going along to to eventually pay off debt sooner than, than later. So that's what that'll be. It's not showing on here, but that's what this is anyway. Um, so incidentally, you can see the totals that are on there and your sheets are 21,264,879, or 21,264,079. <laughs> um, next slide we can look at. Is just our revenue uh, per member that we get is not changed for um, since 2019. I, that could always it could be changed depending on what happens, but uh, it's been consistent. Everything I'm hearing is going to say the same that we're going to get per per student per per member. Next one is our favorite mill rate um, continuing to drop because of our debt dropping off. Um, I am anticipating an increase in uh, property values again, but I didn't budget for that. We try to keep that flat just because that's there's no way to to tell what that's going to be. But recent history has that going up, especially last year where we went up over 10%. Um, I could see not that much this year, but somewhere in between, I would think, a single digits, hopefully. But the anticipated uh, budget uh, mill rate would be 7.78, which is by far the lowest in the uh, in our in our um, CISA. So um, that's that. And the last one, it just shows a. Uh, how our mill rate, another example of our mill rate historically and uh, where we're at and you'll see that there's no debt levy on these going forward after this until we take on more debt. So, and Remember what Jonathan from the auditor said is usually when you have districts that have this little debt and this low of a bill rate, you have buildings that are a shambles. But we don't have buildings that are a shambles. 
we have some needs in our district, but we don't have four buildings that are falling to the ground. This mill rate is astronomically low in comparison to where it was 10 years ago. We have been fiscally responsible, and the board is a large reason why that's the case for the longest time. The community is very much to be thanked for the assistance they provided in April of 2017 with the passing of a referendum, which helped us greatly. Uh, we are sitting in a good position. You'll see there in that rectangular box, the, the mill rate decrease puts us down. The arrow points down. We don't know exactly what that will be, but it's under 8, most likely. We were up near 12 uh, as a matter of 8, 9 years ago. So we are in a good position, and it's a good position to be in as a taxpayer because we are not asking a great deal of your taxes based on the cost or the value of your home. So we are in good shape as it stands. And the last thing I'll say is uh, the correlation between not having any debt or a debt levy. Uh, I don't want to be confused and saying, okay, that money can be shifted back to operations. That's not how that works. It's basically a part of what your overall uh, revenue limit is. It just is it's part of the equation, so you don't automatically get that money that was last year, for instance, allocated to the debt levy. You don't move that into your operation or anything like that. So it's not extra money. So unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Questions? <clears throat> and again, this is just our best oh, estimate. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. I should put a slide up to see what actual was versus <laughs> versus the the uh, the preliminary budget, which is really only operational anyway. You don't see all the other you know uh, funds or anything in this, so it's uh it's really is a, a a shot in the dark, I would say, but an educated shot in the dark. So you're eight months away from yeah. approving a budget that happens in yeah. October, so that's a ways out there, or seven months. <clears throat> Thank you. The next um, informational item, uh, building and grounds presentation by okay. Mr. Sigsman. Yeah. Again, I'll be batting lead off here, and George is going to assist me. I won't refer to George as a banner, but I sort of just did, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he has what, that, what it takes there. So building and grounds report. What you're going to see here is um, a series of slides. The previous three years and then the, the, the next two years in regards to what has been done building and grounds and what we're looking yet to do. And then there is a slide that has things that we would love to do, but we simply can't fit them in the budget. So a little historical perspective on this first slide, you'll see that this is the April 2017 referendum. This is what the referendum was advertised as, and this is what was voted in approval. Please note that not all $1.9 million from the operational referendum was devoted to just building your grounds type stuff. We had $700,000 of the $1.9 million. So what you're going to see in some cases, it's coded in as red. These are items that were uh, done with the use of dollars that were approved from this referendum. So in this next slide, you'll see that there are a couple, one thing in specific that's red. That was the family and consumer ed remodel. So that was done with the use of family, with, with the use of referendum dollars. Where you see blue, that's energy efficiency exemption money. That has gone by the wayside. There's a 1,000 year moratorium on that. So if anyone's around then, we'll revisit it at that time. I don't know exactly what the state's going to do on that. We're hoping it's going to come back. Districts are asking for it to come back, but that by the legislature has fallen by the wayside. So there's a variety of things that you can see have been done out of the general fund. We don't just do building projects out of the referendum money. We do it out of all sorts of different funds that we have. So we've done some little things and some big things. We have done less at the intermediate school than we have in other places. The intermediate school, I, I, I don't think we want to call it new anymore. It's newer than the others. Uh, we're looking at an 18-year-old building here, but some of the other buildings are 40 and 50 years old. So there are some issues that are going on there. George, is there anything that you wanted to speak to on that first slide of 1718 stuff, if you can memorize what was there? <laughs> no. <laughs> Back um, one slide, and then we'll have our, It's the previous oh. one. There it is. And if you have questions for George, this would be the time, because rather than take this in all five slides, it would be pretty hard to do, probably. Yeah, These I are point, just the items that were done. I pointed out a number of those things on our walk around that night, so if you had any questions. 
The next slide is 1819 expenses. You'll see on the far left, this is ultimately the upgrade that took place at the elementary school. Call it a facelift. Really, that entryway was, was outdated and needed some work. The lockers, the lighting, the soundproofing, all of that. And if you've been to the elementary, the before and after picture, it's quite significant. We did a lot of work there. So that was all done with referendum money. The blue item is, again, energy efficiency money. And then the rest was done out of the, the, the regular operational budget that we have here. That's all in black. So those are $18.19. The next slide is 1920, the present school year, which we're wrapping up. We had two big projects this year. Uh, we had through wall flashing issue at the elementary, and then we had the parapet issue at the middle school, but the roof, both of those had to be issues. Those were integrity and safety issues, which you weighed in on way back now some six, eight months ago. And then the last uh, chance at energy efficiency money was used for lighting in, in DDC at the high school and the rest was done right out of the budget. So those are the items that get us to the present. There's nothing else, really nothing else now that's going to be done for the school year 1920. So we're positioning ourselves to wrap up this budget and then look at what's happening in 2021 and 21, 22. Questions on what's already been done. You, you saw many of those things on that evening that we walked around a month or so ago, but I wanted to make sure you had a chance to weigh in if there were questions you had. On the elementary, George, what's the new LVT? Can you re just refresh my memory what those things stand for? They call it, uh, the, the technical word is luxury vinyl tile, and it's basically the wood-looking right. planking. Yep, okay. She's and just testing you. Good work, you passed. <laughs> <laughs> and the PBL? Uh, Project-based learning, where is that? Yeah, the the PBL, project-based learning. What, what was, what was that? there? <clears throat> the rooms? That was the yeah. classroom, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we, uh, well, you call it Montessori over there. I get it mixed up from the AIM to oh. the makerspace to the, <laughs> we did a remodel in one of those rooms. It was split for yeah. a special ed room. Yeah. Oh, so right. we pulled that wall out. It's Heather Hahn's room. Got it. Yes, it is. Yes. And that would be Montessori, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't spell that. Next time we'll make <laughs> <laughs> we'll make sure I'll answer the LVT question next time just to make up for it. Yeah. <laughs> Other questions on the previous three years? I will say on the district wide portion that uh, that's a grounds transportation scenario and Tom Olson, as much as he wanted to be here tonight, he wanted to let you know <laughs> that, he, that he's with you in thought. That was a joke. That was. <laughs> we all get it. It was a good one. It was a good one. Know, right? So the next two years, these are proposals. This is nothing that's been booked and locked in. These are proposals. You've seen many of these items before. You certainly did when we walked the buildings a couple of months, if not a month or more back. Um, for 2021, we are looking at tiling the carpeted hallways. I'm not sure if Tom wants to speak to that, but they are pretty nasty. Let's just be honest. Uh, the vinyl tiling at the high school, it's chipped everywhere. Um, tennis courts is an enormous safety issue. We have four courts. We've got 30 plus girls playing tennis. We got kids that are trekking down to North Twin Park to play tennis. They're down the road, but two miles. Um, so we're looking at mirroring those courts by adding four more so we can then host and we can have a safe situation for our kids. PAs and clocks, this is something you already approved. The, the issue with PAs and clocks, why we're just getting to the second phase now is this. Everyone in the state basically applied for that grant money and a lot of folks, if not all folks, got it. And then the backlog on the work to be done by Heartland Business Systems, they got really swamped. So we're going to be doing that after July 1. And that's the second phase we had already planned. And then the next thing that's up in the air is auditorium lights and sound. I couldn't begin to tell you exactly how many performances we have in the auditorium, but it's a lot. And the, the lights and the sound in there are not good. That's not a new facility anymore. That was put in in 1997. So those are 23-year-old lights and 23-year-old sound system. And if we want to have the Cadillac facility around here for others to come and use. We got to do something there to fix that. So these are all proposals for 2021. Anything I'm missing, George? Yeah, w along with the uh, auditorium lights, there will be quite the energy savings as well. For an average, we've got a number of fixtures that are 1,500 watts, 
and the uh, LED equivalent will be about 127 watts. So we're saving three quarters of the amount of electricity for the most part. Any questions on the proposals for 2021? <coughs> Again, these are proposals. This will be an action item in April for you to tell us yes, no, let's do this, let's not do that. And that will come with costs. Correct. Taxes to Correct. It, right? We'll add bids in the whole nine years. I hope to see you in April. I'll just say it that way. <laughs> Video chat. <laughs> Maybe. 21 22, this is a little further out and much bigger projection. We've got a variety of items that are district wide, uh, runs the gamut. Uh, some of these are, are larger tickets, some of these are smaller, but rest assured all of that adds up to just, uh, just under $700,000. And these are again proposals. We don't know where we're going to stand at that point in time, and we, we have to get concrete numbers on these to make these decisions, but we won't do that in April. That's not until the next year. And, and I'm assuming be, that, I'm sorry, go ahead. And there may be other things that will be added to the list that we just didn't know about. It just happened all of a sudden. Like, Go ahead. Uh, the phone system upgrade, the entryway security, and the door security, those are all things that... That's the phase the three phase of that three, security right? system. The phone system is not, but phone system is a Heartland business system. It's the same company. We would all be tied in at that point. And that's an enormous safety issue because now you tie your clocks, your PA, and your phones all into the same system. You have some dynamic things you can do for safety at that point. Yeah, I think, and that's, I think that's why that we chose that. The Heartland businesses across package. the board then, and they do very good work. Our camera system has been fantastic. Um, will you have estimates on on those, like our, those doorway and entryway securities by the next board meeting? We sort think? of already do. Okay. In a lot of cases. I mean, it's hard to remember. That we did that yep. probably two years ago. So. I'll walk you through what the approval was and how that grant money played in because it didn't cover everything, but it covered some of it. And then we'll have numbers in regards to how much those phases cost. It would We've just already be, got. Yep, absolutely. You know, instead of putting that out to twenty one, twenty two, a consideration of maybe moving maybe. that up. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. To bring in to bring Orr into the equation. She's finally part of the 21-22, the tuck pointing for the most part will be in, at this building. Well, it'll be 20 years old. It's about time. <laughs> what is tuck pointing? Uh, the mortar in between the, the, the mortar joints, between the brick, starting to fail. And there's a lot of, uh, I'll say the word wrong, Keith, you know, effervescence or whatever, that's, they, they'll wash the brick. You'll see a lot of the white coming through in areas. But right. a number of areas, there's enough deterioration on the mortar that they have to uh, chip out what's there and put it back in there. They're relying on that through wall flashing, which hasn't failed here yet to get the water out. But um, as it's in there, and, and if it freezes before it can get out, it'll actually start pushing that mortar out as well. And that's what we're seeing at the high school, right? Yep. Same same thing at the yeah, high school? Yeah, much worse. another slide. Right. <laughs> much worse. So how long is mortar actually supposed to be good for? Um, you know, that's a good question, and I can't tell you, but... Ask old these, man winter. Yeah. There's, you know... <laughs> yeah, different qualities, too. The, the, the heating and cooling um, in the, the winters here, um, it would be... The effervescence kind of starts after five to ten years and a lot of buildings get acid washed. Um, joint failures, that can happen, you know, within a year or two. But until you start seeing it come out or the blocks, you know, typically you, you don't see it unless you're looking for it. But there's enough of it now when you walk in the front of this building, you'll say, oh, yeah, I can see what he's talking about there. So even the columns are starting to absorb some water. Yeah. Is it, and so when you say fail, it doesn't, it's not necessarily mean that they're... They were built to last longer. It's just that they're just starting to deteriorate. The weather is getting to them, yeah. And, okay. and the failure doesn't have anything to do with the structure of the building. The structure of the building is actually blocked like this. That's just basically a pretty face, what they decided the building to look like. Okay. It's a separate wall that sits out there by itself. There's actually an air gap in between there, and then that through wall flashing that lets the water out the weep holes. Um, it just, it's, it's a big piece of rock that, can be moved around, pushed around by the frost wall. Okay. 
The next slide indicates items that are not on any list at this point, so simply beyond the budget. These are all items uh, that are at the high school, and then in addition to that, you're looking at a clubhouse child care facility. And remember, what a ch clubhouse child care facility could be is not just that. It could be other things, too. You could have community ed there. You could also have um, an alternative setting for kids there, too. But the items on the left are all high school issues. Remember, the high school is 1976, built for $3.29 million. So we're talking about a 44-year-old building, built for $3.3 million. So what we're going to do with the public over the course of the next 68 months is educate them as to what's happening there and at that point have, have them help us determine what we're going to do because these things will only get worse and they'll only get bigger and expensive if we let them sit. So we're going to have to address some of these issues. But you can see by the price tags, a lot of it doesn't fit the budget. So, George, any comment on yeah, and the list? With just the high school up there, I can say that the middle school has a number of concerns there as well. Um, all of the HVAC, HVAC um, equipment over there has out, uh, outlived its uh, shelf life by not just one or two years, but um, going on 10 to 14 years. So, and those are big ticket items. There's 65 heat pumps in that building. There's a cooling tower on the roof that is really starting to show its age. Um, and loop pumping, uh, compressors, number of things. So don't want to leave Tom out. Yeah. <laughs> Questions? So the lean elementary is pretty much good to go for a while then with all the repairs and yep. upgrades and everything that's yeah, been done um, in the past three or four years? Except for the items that are breaking as I'm here and will be broke tomorrow. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, it's 1967. Who knows yeah. what's happening yeah, as we yeah. speak? That's got all <laughs> original uh, equipment in there too, but the thought of replacing that we'd literally have to take the roof off to be able to get the equipment up there. All the air handlers are in mezzanines, uh, and it's got a concrete span, what do they call that, Keith? Uh, spancrete. Spancrete, yeah, mixed it up. Um, so they would have to cut into that to drop down water heaters, boilers, um, air handling units. So basically we're just uh, adding new parts to old equipment. And you guys are up there. They didn't look too bad for as old as they were. Yeah. Other questions? Well, and then next meeting, hopefully, we you can prioritize a little bit, too. Yeah, we actually have a long-term facilities needs um, uh, document. And mm -hmm. it's fairly, I mean, it, things move around. If, a, a number three could be a number one, depending on um, yep. the failure. So, uh, but we do. We do have that, and then uh, I think any time you guys want it, we can get that to you, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would be nice to have before. We'll, you'll see it next month. Next week, yeah. Mm -hmm. All righty. Right. Thanks, George. Yep. Tom Tom covers for me then next week, right? That's right. <laughs> you can talk to him about it. Thanks, George. <laughs> All right, the next item, um, focus groups and school perception trends on school climate okay well we did a focus group session with our staff we had 30 groups of staff uh, seven or eight people per group so by the math it was somewhere between 210 and 240 staff all employee groups mixed them up and put them in uh, a, a place to have a good conversation and we have six questions that we asked of them and then a chance for them to chime in on their own so when you see the number on the screen that means there are 30 groups 22 of the groups in this particular case made this comment. So that's how it was, in essence, prioritized. So of the 30 groups, the number is what you're looking at each time. So the first question, what's going really well in the district, was that question. And with no further ado, it's coming, connecting. There it is. Uh, you'll see here. I, I, I think it makes little sense for me to read it to you. You can see it for yourself, and you can certainly chime in if you have questions or comments. That's question one, what we're doing really well. It appeared to me to be very positive news. Yep. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for me to move on? Sure. 
Number two, we always have to continue to look to see what we need to do a better job of. And what we asked here is what would you like to see change in order to make this a better place to work? I'll make some commentary uh, here. Uh, too many initiatives. Uh, it's not that we're adding initiatives by choice at times. It's that things are being asked of us that we're required to do. It's a taxing job. A lot of stuff's being added to educators' plates and to administrators' plates, and not much gets taken off. Uh, you'll see some compensation pieces here, uh, not having to pay for personal days. That's an item that Compensation Committee is looking at. We've got some thoughts on how to address that. Um, the PDH uh, item for the compensation scale, that's connected. We have a, a drastic sub shortage. Uh, sub work is tough work, and everyone around us has got the same issues. So those are some of the items that folks notice. Any questions on the second question? The third is, how would you describe Amory to uh, someone that doesn't work here? I'm very heartened to be able to say that people chimed in in such a positive way about their coworkers. It's a place that district staff really care about kids and about each other. And I was just as happy to hear that there's a lot of opportunities for kids. If they want to be in something, there's a lot of stuff out there for a school of our size to be in. And the truth be told, some of them are just too many things and there's really not enough time in the day. Strong community support for our schools. This uh, community has always been supportive of our schools, and we are very fortunate to be able to say that. And then the district is seen as a progressive place, which we have to be if we're going to be competitive with our neighbors. Questions on the third item? The fourth question was, what's the biggest challenge in working here? I made reference to this a little bit earlier when we did the, the budget, the preliminary budget presentation. The needs of our kids uh, are rising in number and in severity. And I don't mean special ed kids. I mean kids in general, at-risk kids, uh, all types of kids. We've got a lot of kids that are in need of help. Uh, there's not enough time in the day to get it done. That was uh, 18 times that was mentioned. Family dynamics are challenging. We live in a place where there are some challenging family dynamics. Too many initiatives was listed again. And uh, connected to the not enough time is the increase in staff that's desired in some departments. So those were the comments that folks made in response to that question. OK. The fifth question, what are you most proud of, again? The staff chimed in in a very positive way about each other, that staff are very dedicated to the work, and again, about the opportunities for kids, because there really are a lot of opportunities. And lastly, we can't ever lose sight of what we are actually here to do, and that's to educate our kids. And people felt strongly that we do a nice job of, of preparing them academically, which I couldn't agree with more. We do. There's a lot of really good work being done K-12. And the one I'd like to make reference to, I was really happy to see this, Amory alumni making us proud. Whether they're coming back and working here as high school principals or intermediate school principals or they're coming back here to do something else altogether. There are kids that, well, they leave us and then they come back home, but they're always ours. And sometimes they really are. They're staying here. So I thought that was great. What would you see as the future of education in Amory. Dramatic increase in the need of assistance for at-risk kids. We have to have more resource. And resource means people, things, whatever it could be to address those issues. More flexible, more flexible, continuing to grow the need of flexible programs. We're talking project-based learning and Montessori and all of those assorted options, not just your traditional and your legacy programs. And we've done that here. For a district of our size to offer what we do is, is really unheard of. And we're, we're made, we made a commitment to that. And we have done very well in those environments. Yeah, an improved virtual education program for those who desire it. Well, some have desired it, and they might be getting it earlier than they thought. <laughs> and we'll try her out to the best of our ability. But we have to do some work there, because a lot of kids are interested in that as a, as a, a choice for their education. And I think that's the last slide. <coughs> Questions, comments? I'm not sure if any of the administrative team wanted to chime in. They were part of this process, too. It seemed like a, a pretty successful endeavor. And one thing that you didn't see here that was just sort of the underlying tone of it all, people felt really happy that they were asked, that they felt they had a voice. And people chimed in really positively in that way. 
And another thing that folks said, well, I didn't have any idea that was happening. I don't ever see people from that building. So I, was, I didn't know that. So they heard from all different people from all different perspectives. So that was helpful, too. We live in our little bubbles all day long <laughs> as educators. So I think it would be great if we could just, you know, continue to discuss some of the things that they especially asked, you know, things they'd like to see changes to the district and, um, and those challenges that they're facing and things that we keep uh, looking at those and discussing what we can do. I mean, some things are kind of out of our control sure. or we, we can only do so much, but obviously we, we want to help where we can. We're looking to address some of those compensation pieces, the level of at-risk need. I mean, that's a conversation we've had for a decade, more, and we're trying to do what we can to address the, that issue. It's an ever-changing topic in regards to <coughs> severity and how complex it is, and it's really hard to be able to address because sometimes you can't even ferret out what the root cause of what's going on happens to be. There's so many people coming to bear on situations in, inside the district and out. That's going to continue to be a conversation for us, definitely. Okay. All right. The uh, last informational item is the school board election. School board election is set for Tuesday, April 7th. I have heard nothing <coughs> otherwise. So this is the sample ballot that's been um, sent to the necessary folks, and it's all ready to roll, and we'll vote on April 7th, and we'll see where we stand. Or maybe the 8th, 9th, or 10th. Or maybe the 8th, or 9th, or 10th, or whatever day it happens to be. Right now, it's the 7th. Okay, uh, moving on to the action items. The first action item is the Spanish trip. Spanish trip. Cynthia Johnson here to present on Spanish trip in the spring of 2021. Yeah, hopefully it happens. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. As an aside, this would be the time to mention we did have a French trip scheduled for the end of this month, the March of 2020, 2020 trip to France. Um, the events of the day have canceled that trip and then some. So we're working with that travel company to, to, to make that right, so to speak, very much circumstances way, way beyond our control. So on yeah. to Spanish. How many, how many kids were supposed to go? Seven, the French trip. plus the chaperone, so eight individuals. Originally, we were okay getting there, but we weren't sure we were going to be able to get back, which would be a problem. <laughs> And now we're not sure we would get there or back, so we're no. not going. Yeah. And what's the point is because everything is closed now. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. all the tourist parts were closed. Yeah. So on to Spanish. Okay, on Spanish. So I'm trying to do a little bit more work for the kids to be involved in the Spanish trip. Since last year I had five of them for the first time after, I don't know, like 10 years probably, the last one or so. So I'm thinking to do, um, to do it earlier so that way I can enroll the kids and work them more. So I decided to start now. And we have, a, all of this is a tentative dates as now. Um, we want to go on March 7, which is every other year. It's my trip since we have um, a spring break. So the kids were basically will um, miss five days of school, and then the rest will be during the spring break. So that's how it is. And we, in the beginning, we thought maybe we can do it in June, but it's a little bit more money to do it in June. So we said, well, let's do it in March and see. But it can change, too, depending on how many kids we have and, and stuff. So um, the company we do it is the same as the French. Uh, company, the Language and Friendship, which I know that we've been working with them for the past 17 plus years. So it has been very positive for, for us. And uh, what, I, what we like the most, uh, the most of this company is that um, the kids get the opportunity to stay with families for a certain time. So for me, it will be five days. They will be with a family. and. Um, and I guess some students get a little bit concerned about going to a house that they don't know. But actually, this company get together with them. They match them. They have to know, you know, what uh, the qualities that they have, what they like to do, their hobbies, and all of that. And they match with other kids. 
uh, um, the people from Spain actually they look at each kid with uh, the kid that want to go a picture of them and the family and that description and then they say well this this uh, student match with us so that's how they connect and they normally connect like a couple months before the trip so with all the technology they get to know each other on through technology so that's kind of cool it, it kind of helps a little bit and um, we want to go to three different places, basically. It will be going to from here to Madrid and Madrid to Segovia. Um, and then we will do some, we won't stay in Madrid because my kids that we traveled last year, they didn't, they said Madrid is a big city, profe, and I think staying in a small, a small city will be much better for us. So hopefully you can do that. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna arrive to Madrid and move to Segovia. And then we stay in there for a, for a day or so. And then we go from Segovia, the students will stay and they will go and see their families, which we don't know where exactly it's gonna be. Um, it's supposed to be kind of close to, they even they say Valladolid or Salamanca, something like that. It will be, they don't know, they all depending on the dates again and how many kids will go. But um, after that, they will stay with them for five days. And at that time, I am gonna be around. I normally, well, the last time I stay in the same town that they stayed, just in case they need me. And I'm in contact with them as much as possible. We try not to have contact unless they contact me using some kind of passwords in case that they have issues so the family don't feel bad. So, but um, last year I had a, a student who was saying, I just dropped her off and a couple hours later she contacted me and she said, Profe, I need to go. I need you to come and pick me up because I can't do this. It's overwhelming, I can't do it. So I said, you know, just, you're tired. We just work a lot. So um, that same day, day, night actually, I was in town and she happened to go outside, out, out town with two with the family and she came and hugged me and I thought, okay, this I never seen it from this kid, but came, <laughs> hugged me and she said, I'm so happy I seen you and, and I'm, I'm happy now, I'm okay, I can do this and you know, but I said, well, I'm here, I'm in a couple blocks from, from where we are, so you know my contact, so I'm always in contact with them. Um, and, I, and the company wants us to stay around like at 20 miles around the area. So in case of an emergency, we can just go through, through very easily. So after that, I go and pick them up. Uh, I pick them up and that, the, um, to, to Segovia, whatever place, and then we go to Madrid. Um, and again, we go to Madrid just to go and take the train to Toledo. And that's where we're gonna stay another night in Toledo. And then uh, from Toledo, we go back to Madrid and we do our kind of tourism in Madrid and then we come back here. So that's the sad part, to come to United States. So this company includes, uh, of course, uh, includes the round trip. Uh, as you can tell, we have four nights in hotels. Um, normally, depending on the number of the students, it's two to three students per room. Uh, last time we have two per room. Um, and they have a lot of, they get continental breakfast, which the breakfast is amazing, it's a lot. And I, I'm a, I, I told uh, Chelsea's daughter, I said, I'm a mom, a Hispanic mom, so I'm gonna make you eat before we go. I'm gonna make sure you eat and take something with you and all that, so, so we eat a lot. So they, then they just, uh, we just eat something cheap around, you know, and stuff, and they, they have fun. And then um, the seven nights or five nights, depending on how many days we'll be with the family, they don't get to pay anything on that. Uh, we normally tell the kids they can you know, bring $40 that's per day in case that they need to do something. But with the families, normally you, they, they pay for everything. If they go out, they will pay for the, for the host and all of that. But it would be nice if one time the host would say, I will pay for it just because it's, you know, being polite. Um, we have a um, motor coach, uh, couch, coach and mini buses and they're amazing. Uh, we travel and um, by train and all that is prepaid. So we just go there and just grab our tickets. 
And um, the transfers to the airport, too, they go and pick us up. They drop the kids, and we drop the kids in the hotel, and then um, they, take, they take us to the family and pick them up again. So it's always transportation is included in there. Um, we have some fees that include, like museums and other things that we plan according to how many days we're going to stay and what we want to see. So it's basically what, what whatever the students would like to see, that's how we make our trip. So, um, so then, of course, uh, uh, travel insurance, I like this because the insurance that they have is basically um, they cover everything. Um, Included if your student stays uh, in Madrid or in whatever uh, place and they get very sick to the point that hopefully, knock on wood, they need to be hospitalized and I can't be there, there will be always some uh, member of the company that will be there with the student so I can go with the rest. And then if it's possible to bring the parents, they will fly the one parent include, that is included in the insurance. So that's why I like that company too, and not all the companies offer that. So, um, and of course, some we, we get some preparation material for them, for the students before we go. We try, I try to meet with them once a month or a couple, couple times a month uh, to prepare them to see what we're gonna do, how we're gonna do, and all of that. So the cost is around $3,895. This is based on eight to nine students. So, um, of course, if we have more students, hopefully I'm getting into the point that hopefully I get eight, pushing a little bit in there. But so far I have two that already are excited, sign up for it, and I said just wait <laughs> to see. Mm -hmm. But um, the enrollment is supposed to be on next month, but doing do all this situation, I call and they say, well, we probably can do the first uh, first enrollment, which will be a save of, uh, they will save $150 by May 15. So there will be this long opportunity for them to start uh, saving more money and put some in case that we can do, we can do it. And then of course they have some other uh, enrollment plans if they do like in um, June. And then of course those dates will be had to move, I guess, according to the dates. But the deadline will be not until September. The only thing with the September, they don't save any money. So, um, but we were supposed, the kids are very excited. They told me that they already have some ideas about um, doing some fundraise and stuff. So they're very excited about that. Um, but also, I tell them you have to work, basically, just because it's a lot of money. So it, fundraise sometimes is more the work than what we get. So, um, is basically the kids need to work and put some money or ask for Christmas time and all that. So, so we're excited and to see how everything goes and hopefully we can do it. So I don't know. Do you have any questions for me? Um, the thirty-eight ninety-five is that the um, airfare as well? Yeah, everything. Okay. It's everything, including including uh, one chaperone. So it will be me. Uh, this is and if we have, let me see. Um, Hmm, the price of, oh, if we have from 10 to 12, it's still one, one person as a guide, um, a leader for me too. So, it, so after 12 students, it will be two. But I don't, I hope I can have 10, but I'm not sure. And when do you have to let them know? May 15th? It will be? Now will be May 15th. That they, yeah. To, for them to save $150, that will be a May. And um, when does that, do they have a deposit that they have to pay before? They, or? Yes, yes, they do. If they deposit like in May, uh, that is like $400 that they will deposit. Oh. Yeah. And then after that, they they can, uh, they have a like a little payment that they, a payment plan. I don't control any of the money, it's directly to the company. So they can also apply for scholarship. The company offers some scholarship up to $1,000, but they had to uh, do that. Um, but it's not open yet until September. So they, they have that and they, um, they give them opportunities to, to do like a, a payment, monthly payment, whatever. 
So it's very easy to work with them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other and questions? <coughs> travel insurance is included? Yes. I didn't see that on the list. I saw travel medical, but not travel insurance. Oh, okay. In case something like... Like right like now? Right, right now. <laughs> <laughs> like right now. Um, Good example. I think it might be. I'm not 100% sure about it, but I can... Um, I can certainly a lot of check. those companies but have it as an optional add-on yeah. Yeah. yeah I know every time I book a plane ticket it always has that option mm -hmm. option so. yeah yeah and I think mm -hmm. I, if uh, if they're not included I will kind of suggest to but that would be individual parent mm -hmm. to buy it just in case just to say but I do I do talk to them and said you know in case that the kids enroll by May and we still well this is long time and hopefully by then we have everything under control but let's say that is still you know you never know so they said well because of the situation we can work with them and um, because they won't be pay off by the time hopefully uh, it won't be more than a hundred two hundred dollars that they will lose so just because of the, all the paperwork and all that stuff that they had to do but yeah so this is an action item, so you'll need to weigh in, yay or nay. I make a motion well. that we approve the French trip for next spring. Yes. Spanish. 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 Sorry, <laughs> Spanish trip. <laughs> we can do both yeah. Spanish is next year. Different country. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, Spanish trip is approved. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Oh, yeah. It is. Hopefully we get more. Yeah. yeah. All right, the next uh, action item are uh, the donations to the district. Donations to the district. We thankfully have a couple of donations to the district, and up on the screen you'll see what they are. The first is an anonymous donation to the lunch milk account of $500. Again, anonymous. Uh, we would author a thank you, but we don't know who you are, but thank you for that donation. So Ex is that specifically for, like, negative accounts? Mm-hmm. Uh, a donation of weight room equipment to Amory alumni, from Amory alumni, Brant Lumen of $2,000. So that'll be added to the arsenal in the weight room area. A stander for special education department donated by Jerry Cook. Maybe you want to speak to that, Brad? You'd be better to speak to that than I would. Yeah, this is an adaptive piece of equipment um, that was used by a young man here in the community and uh, available still in uh, good shape was um, inspected and evaluated by uh, Barb French, our physical therapist, and um, it's still got some years of life for it, potentially for another um, person to use it in the district. So that was a donation. And then I believe the last donation listed here is a kind donation from Doug Reinhardt of Dick's Fresh Market, the Amory Warrior Pump, $2,084.08. He was going to do the donation presentation on a quarterly basis, and he simply wants this to go to needy families, whether that be the Angel Fund or something else altogether, but just go to needy kids. So we thank Doug very kindly for that offer, uh, that donation. Thank you very much. And you are obligated to accept them in that they are donations as an action item. So we need to make a motion Move to, to approve the donations to the district as outlined in the presentation. Second. Okay. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. The donations are accepted. Thank you very much to all of the people who donated those items to us, and they will be put to good use. All right, the next action item, uh, start college now and early college credit program. Mr. The Bull. old youth options. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Mr. At Bull. this time, we have two students that are going to take advantage of this next fall, uh, taking a couple courses. Um, these have gone through the process with our guidance counselors to make sure it's a, a good choice for them, and their parents have signed off, and we support this decision for them. Move to accept uh, start college now and early college credit program. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, the early college credit program is approved. Thank you. Um, we already did the waivers, so now we're on to the third reading of board policy 443.5. This is the cell phone policy. What you'll see on the screen is the modified finished version cleaned up of the cell phone policy of years gone by. The other version, uh, if you put it up on the screen here quickly, you'll see is a lot of red. It's been changed dramatically. So the policy as it's been rewritten 
states the following. It says, the school district of Amory may allow students to possess and use cell phones during the school day on school premises and at school sponsored activities. The rules for cell phone use during the school day for students will be determined by the principal of each build, school building. The cell phone use procedure shall be, shall be made clear to students at the beginning of each school year. Copies of the cell phone policy for each building will be made available to individuals upon request. Cell phone use is prohibited by state law in all locker room and bathroom settings. And lastly, the school policy for computer use will be defined in the school technology use contract because it does say electronic equipment at the top. We have computers too, but that's a whole different set of language. And then there are the Wisconsin state statutes that go with that. It was approved first in 1990, and here we are 30 years later, not even realizing that there were cell phones way back in 1990. Were there? I don't know. Were there? I don't even know. It's been a while. Not, not by students, anyway. Not by students. So this is the policy for you to discuss and approve if you so choose. Um, yeah, I think that you made, when we went over this at the last board meeting, it looks like you made the corrections that we, you know, that are noted in my notes anyway. Yep. And I don't really have any further questions or discussion on it. I move to approve the policy 443.5 for cell phones. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. All right, the new policy for student use and possession of cell phones um, is approved. Thank you. All right, the last item, uh, personnel. Okay, we have two resignations, Annie Banky and Amy Groth. Uh, then we'll skip past the retirement. I'll come back to that in a moment. And we have a few new hires. Uh, two of them are familiar faces or transfers within the district, Jeremiah Fisk and Janet Stanek. Wyatt Komanek and Crystal, is it Nigan? Mm -hmm. Negan. I'm going to say it wrong every time, probably. And then we have a retirement, Mary Bartlett. And I asked Mary uh, for her thoughts upon her last few months here, and here's what she shared. She has been in education for 37 years, 32 years, teaching grades 4 and 5 in the School District of Amory, the remainder in Special Ed in Central Wisconsin. She said, wow, on memories, I have retyped this paragraph now 100 times. I have so many memories, each memory in its own way sparks a tear. Bottom line, I am fortunate to have had the opportunity to do something I love and have had the honor of learning and growing with so many students and colleagues over the years. What she's looking forward to in retirement, hoping to spend more time with her family, reading, volunteering, teaching a bit, and a golf game that is desperately in need of some improvement. <laughs> and I'm not sure if you wanted to share anything, or at least she's been with you for a while. The whole time. The whole time. <laughs> yeah. We taught together first, and then she's been at the intermediate school. So just an amazing person, and so happy to have had her here. She's really emotional, so she just felt like she could not come here and not cry. So <laughs> we let her off the hook and said that she didn't have to come. But she will be very missed. Yeah. Amazing teacher. Yeah, yeah. great teacher. Thanks we could Mrs. not Bartlett. approve it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's still going. Based <laughs> on what I've heard her say. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thanks, Mrs. Bartlett, for all your years. And yeah. if you hear this, and we could we appreciate you more than you know, teachers that come and stay, educators that come and stay, and be in the classroom for that long are gems, and the lives that she's impacted are many, many. I move to approve the personnel actions as outlined. Is there second. a second? Second. Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, the personnel actions are approved as stated. And uh, there's no reason to go back into closed session, so I will uh, take a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, roll call, Aaron? Yes. Shar? Yes. Dale? Yes. 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 All right, we're adjourned. Thank you.